Nine Street Nine. GTFM, Wednesday afternoon at 12.31. Um, a very special guest today is Mark Colburn. Uh, good afternoon again, Mark. Hi. So, we had this terrible inju in, uh, injury, and then, of course, we had all the treatment. How long did the treatment actually last for then, before you actually got back to walking again? I initially, it was probably about 12 months, mm, okay, right. when I was functional, using crutches, um, almost self-sufficient, you know, moved back in with, obviously, my uh, my parents mm. in Tradiga, and they were just so supportive, Gareth, you know, mm. they really were. And then, just out of the blue one day, I just started, you know, sort of cycling again, mm. albeit with a disability because that's what I could do. I could clip in my cycling shoes and, you know, my dad used to take me down to uh, the Hardwick, Hardwick um, Junction in near Abergavenny because right. it was nice and flat, yeah, know. you know, and uh, and just started cycling regularly. And then I, I, did, I mean, were you a big fan of cycling or did you do it just to give strength to your legs? I, I raced triathlon for a long time before my accident. So, oh. and I've ridden a bike since I was about five. Mm, Typical right. Tradiga boy. Yeah, you just know, jump on. Yes, yeah. obviously rode all the hills in Ebervale, etc. And, um, and, and it was a, a great time for me to become functional again. Right. And then I was doing a charity bike ride one day for the, the Wales Air Ambulance. And this chiropractor said to me, what's wrong with your legs? Told him the story, broke mm. my back 12 months ago, lower leg paralysis. You know, half of my legs don't work, but half do. Yeah. And he said to me these words, he said, um, can I ask you a question? I said, yeah, of course. Are you training for the London 2012 Paralympic Games in two years time? I said, no. Why the hell would I do that? Oh, yeah. Don't be silly. Yeah. He said, well, I think you should. All right. And the light bulb moment went off. Yeah. And I thought to myself... It's something you just didn't think of. What if I What if I can get to the games? Mm. Like, what, what if? Yeah, what, what if? Achievement that would be. So I worked with Disability Sport Wales in Cardiff and a wonderful, wonderful coach called Neil Smith. Mm. And Neil Smith was a volunteer for, for DSW and he's a cycling coach. And he understood, you know, obviously what it takes to get into British cycling as a facilitator, right. you know. Okay. And Neil is just an incredible mentor that, you know, is still one of my best friends today. And he had that conversation with British cycling and said, look, we've got this guy, he's 41. Mm. He's a bit old, <laughs> <laughs> but he's got a huge engine. Yeah. You know, he's got strong legs. Motivation. Yeah. And he's got the commitment mm. because that's what you need to do is commit. And coming from Tradiga, all weather experience as well. Yes. The cold, the warmth. Be be because the I suppose in, in cycling, there's no such thing as bad weather. No. Only a bad choice of clothing. <laughs> There we are, that's a good point. So yeah. Neil said to British Cycling, I've got this this young man um, and uh, I think you should take a look at him. Mm. So they said, well, where, where, where does he come from? Mm. You know, we've never seen him before. We're literally now two years out from London. Right. You know, wh where does he come from? And uh, Neil said, well, he's uh, he's fell out of the sky. <laughs> <laughs> literally, literally, literally. Yeah. yeah. So so that was the beginning of uh, of my, uh, my steps into British Cycling, into the most prestigious sporting organization in the UK yeah so um, you eventually qualified for Linton 2012 and the rest is history so that, that builder what was the selection process like then that probably went on for a good couple of months well, well I was uh, I was elevated up to Manchester on lottery funding uh, mm -hmm. in September 2011 so right. still one year one year from the games and uh, and obviously training full-time as a full-time professional athlete um, and, and it was a childhood dream come true mm. you know Unfortunately, I had to give up chocolate, Gareth. Oh no! I, had, I, I, no, well, I, I could never, I could never, I could never become a cyclist. Then. I had to give up alcohol. Like a chocolate, did you? <laughs> chocolate. So, so that 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 um, moment of stepping into the environment of British cycling was mm. just so clinical, right? Because you have to be, you know, mm. as a professional yeah. athlete, yeah. and and I loved it. Mm. So over the winter, did lots, thousands and thousands of miles of training, you know, and trained on the velodrome in Manchester. Yeah. So did you cross paths with Sir Chris Hoy then? Yes, yeah. uh, every Tuesday and Thursday. We used to share the track with the Olympic team. Right. Uh, Vicky Pendleton. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you had some amazing athletes on there, you know, some sprinters, some endurance riders. Um, you'd have the odd, uh, you know, the odd gym session mm. with some just A-list celebrities. Right. You know, it's just incredible. It's yeah. quite... Uh, mind-boggling. Quite yeah. mind-boggling. So... So then I qualified for the World Track Championships in February 2012. And where were they held? They were held in Los Angeles. All right. Um, and I was very privileged to win 
the right. three kilometer percent. We're not privileged, good enough to win. That's well, the key, it, isn't it? It is a privilege to a certain degree because you know you're given that opportunity. But the downside was that my dad unfortunately passed away a day oh. before I won the worlds, oh. and that for me was heartbreaking. You know, seeing Mr. Nice terrible, Guy, terrible timing. My inspiration, never seeing me win the worlds. You know, mm. um, but like my mother said, you know, he probably knew in his heart. You know, um, and that was seven months before the games, and then that epic. Gareth, that mm. epic summer of sport where the whole country got just behind us. Just came together, didn't it? And for just anybody, who, for anybody who watched the Olympics, you know, it was a great warm up for the Paralympics. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes, that, that was the warm up. Yeah. Yes, and you won the gold. Yes. So the selection going into London, you know, I raced in three races: uh, keep the kilo, four laps of the velodrome, the ten mile time trial, took you know a silver in each race. But the three kilometer pursuit, which is 12 laps of the velodrome, was the race that I wanted. You yeah, know? And, right. and that morning in qualifications, I broke the world record. And then four hours later in the final, um, I, I broke the world record again, which was just unbelievable. unbelievable. You know, albeit by about six inches, Gareth, but a win's a win. Well done, sir. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Now you've been kind enough to bring your gold medal in. Yes. Now we recorded this for YouTube, as we often do, so we'll uh, we'll show this to the camera. Uh, yes. All right. Yes. Let me just uh, hold it. So up this there. is four hundred grams of Paralympic gold medal, um, and the 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 great thing for me is that they were made in the Royal Mint. They were. That's they right. Were. In Clantris and yep. close. Yeah, so it's that's the closest uh, I ever get to a better, <laughs> Let me tell you, brilliant, Mark. Excellent. So yeah, yeah, it was a great moment in time because I think when you, when well, you it's quite a big medal, isn't it? Yeah, as well as four hundred grams, and you know it's obviously yeah. a large diameter as well. But and I a, think a lovely box as well. It comes in presentation box. Brilliant. I think knowing after London, was all the hard work worth it? Yes. Was the legacy of twenty twelve something that was going to impact the country? Yes, but not straight away. No, you right. know, we're now seven years down the line mm. and we're still talking about London. We're still talking about the Olympics and Paralympics to the point where people are actually so proud, you know, mm. to have been part of the games. Yes. The games makers, you know, the commissaires, yeah. the judges and obviously the athletes. Brilliant. You know, it was just uh, it was just incredible. And you went to Rio in twenty sixteen as a as a broadcaster for Five Life. Yes, yes, it was quite weird because I obviously hung up my cycling shoes. Um, you know, I think it was September, October uh, 2013. Mm. So going into 2014, because I I decided to retire, I thought, well, I've achieved it. Achi I've achieved it all. Perfect. World champion, world record holder, Paralympic gold medalist. I've got my own gold post box in yeah. Tradiga. <laughs> you know, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> which is brilliant. Um, Surreal, but it's you know, there. It's yours. And, and I think then, having been awarded the MBE, you know, yeah, for my, well done for that, for my services yeah. to sport and my country by. You know, His Royal Highness Prince Charles mm. was just an incredible yeah. moment in time. You that, know? that was some dream, wasn't it? You know, the dream becoming true. You know, so it's... surreal, Gareth. Yeah. So yeah. surreal. Yeah. So, so when and, I... and, and the ironic thing is, Mark, if you hadn't had the accident, the no. world, the world of cycling would have never have known I existed. Yes. You know. In, in so, so to way. then retire, and then get the phone call to go to Rio as mm. part of the commentary team and the analyst team. Yes. Was uh, was a great moment for me because I saw I saw the Paralympics from the other side of the fence, mm. if that makes yes, sense. Yes, yes, you know? of course you do, yeah. And uh, and Rio, yeah, Rio was incredible. The games was just phenomenal. And they looked after you well? It, it, honestly it was great. Yeah. You know, I was very privileged, I felt so grateful. But you know, the amount of medals we brought back mm. as a nation mm. You know, and certainly for Wales. Yes. You know, if you look at Wales as a, a small country with just over three million people, we mm. definitely, definitely punch above our weight. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. So, what's the plans for the future then, Mark? Well, I think for me, it's always been contribution. Mm. You know, I certainly enjoy helping. You know, organisations, charities. Mm. Um, you know, within South Wales especially, mm. and certainly on a national basis as an international speaker. Yeah. You know, as a business coach as well. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's certainly something that I truly mm. enjoy. And uh, and obviously long may it continue, you know. Absolutely, and uh, you've got a fondness and a, and a like and a broadcasting as well, haven't you? you yes, I do, and obviously I've worked with you know various um, organisations, you know, from the BBC, mm -hmm. you know, with Radio Five Live, yeah. BBC Radio Wales, yeah. um, you know, radio stations, community radio stations all around the country, yeah. Yeah. and uh, and I think that's certainly one of my passions, that comes back to sharing information that people currently don't know. Mm. I honestly think, and I'm not, I mean, I'm going to sound biased, obviously, but I think there's a huge place now for community radios. 
uh, because it, it sort of announces the community spirit between people in communities. And yeah. uh, GTFM yeah, yeah. is one of the, you know, the, the number one stations in Wales for that sort of thing. Yeah, but the important thing is, and the training that I've had is to uh, tell people something they don't know. Mm and take them somewhere they've never been before. That's a good uh, way of putting it, absolutely. Mark, it's been a privilege. I got a funny feeling you might be on the uh, on the airwaves of GTFM soon. Um, Gavin's around, we'll have you on the chat with Gavin. <laughs> I'd but, love it, I'd, yeah. love to, I'd love to help everybody, I really yeah, would, well, yes. You, well, well done uh, on, on A, the recovery, and that strong spirit that brought you through it. Well done, obviously, on the cycling, and all the great achievements uh, of becoming the world champion, and of course, the 2012 Paralympic gold medalist. There's something nice about that too, and everybody say it. Yeah. Gold medalist. Yeah. Yes, yes. And well done on the MBE as well. Thank you very much indeed. Mark Colburn, MBE, thanks very much, Mark. And Merry Christmas as well. Merry Christmas to you, Gareth, and Merry Christmas to all the listeners. Thanks. Another two of the world's best songs brought to you by Ponta Free okay. Market. Excellent. Double the Good. Well done. Double Good. The Good. Thank you.